Is there, is there uh, Emily, is there, is there a protocol here? Whatever. You're the reason we're here. Yeah, we can get in the center. No. Hold on. Let's see if I can pull my stomach in. Okay, go ahead. Me too. Yeah, honestly. All right, ready? One, two, Yes, I am. I'll fully admit that. Emily, I'm going to get us going here, okay? Perfect, yeah. All right, great. Um, I want to just start by welcoming everybody uh, here on this uh, kind of cold and windy, rainy day. So I appreciate it, but I think it's going to be well worth it because um, I think uh, we're going to have a, a really f uh, interesting, enlightening, fun discussion here on a topic that has been... Um, in the news quite a bit over the past uh, couple of years. Uh, my name is Frank Montero, and I am a graduate of the law school here of, from the class of 1986. Um, I'm the managing <coughs> partner of a communications law firm here in Washington called Fletcher, Heald, and Hildreth. And uh, I'm delighted to welcome all of you here for today's panel on uh, net neutrality. Uh, we're pleased to partner with, uh, with the GW Law Alumni Association and the GW Law Global Internet Forum in co-hosting this timely discussion on the legal implications of net neutrality. The law school is very pleased to provide this opportunity for government, private sector, and academic panelists to exchange views on important developments in this fast changing field. And we're also really privileged and delighted to have uh, with us here today FCC Commissioner Mignon Clyburn. And uh, I can't tell you uh, what a thrill it is to have her here. Um, uh, she will uh, uh, be staying for a question and answer on the topic, uh, uh, followed, which will then be followed by a panel discussion with experts in the field. So many thanks to all of the distinguished guests and to Commissioner Clyburn for being here today. Um, Commissioner Mignon Clyburn is currently in her second term at the Federal Communications Commission. She served at the SEC's first acting chairwoman after her reappointment to the commission by President Barack Obama in 2013. Commissioner Clyburn began her service at the FCC in August of 2009 after spending 11 years as a member of the 6th District on the Public Service Commission of South Carolina. She served as its chair from July 2002 through June of 2004. Prior to her service on the um, South Carolina Public Service Commission, she was the publisher and general manager of the Coastal Times, a Charleston-based weekly newspaper that focused primarily on issues affecting Af the African American community. She co-owned and operated the family-founded newspaper for 14 years. Throughout her two terms as, the FCC com as an FCC commissioner, Commissioner Clyburn has been committed to closing the digital divide, and specifically, she has been active for lifeline modernization, which assists low-income consumers defray the cost of broadband service Champion, she has championed diversity and media ownership. She's initiated inmate calling service reforms and emphasized diversity and inclusion in STEM opportunities and fought to preserve a free and open internet. Um, and finally, I would also like to um, uh, welcome the other panelists who will be here uh, 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 after uh, our, our initial Q&A with Commissioner Clyburn. Um, we have uh, Keenan, Keenan Adamchak, who is a uh, a graduate of the uh, 2014 uh, class of, uh, of the law school. He is an associate at Fletcher Hield and Hildreth. Devron Brown, who's a third year uh, law student here and also the senior uh, publications editor of the Federal Communications Law Journal here at the law school. And 
uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Professor Don Nunziato, who's the Kirkpatrick Research Professor of Law and the co-director of the Global Internet Freedom Project here at the Law School. So many thanks to all of you here. Um, so let me begin by moving down here from, from welcomer to, to questioner. Commissioner Clyburn. Which may or may not be welcome. Yeah. You, you and I have actually done this before, although this is the first time I think we've ever done it on, on net neutrality. We're usually yes. going back on media ownership and things like that. So, I mean, obviously, uh, uh, you know, a, a day barely goes by where the FCC, the FCC is getting more attention these days than it has in, 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 in my years of practicing before it. So maybe just from the audience, maybe you can just give us sort of a, an overview of, 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 you know, what are your what is your take on net neutrality and mm -hmm. how do you see the issue of net neutrality affecting consumers generally? Well, first of all, Frank, it's a pleasure uh, to be on this campus. You could have ordered up a, a better uh, Monday, but I'm not going to hold that uh, against you. Uh, look, at, you, you know, the one thing you said I, I, I want to pick up on a little bit, um, you mentioned uh, primarily because of net neutrality, the FCC has gotten a lot of attention. But I will say, and, and hopefully I'm not uh, saying this uh, you know, out of turn in terms of this audience, the FCC should have always been front and center uh, when it comes to our everyday lives. It was established uh, back in, uh, in 1934, a sort of a, a, a melding um, or meshing of the uh, Federal Radio Commission and the Interstate Commerce Commission. Uh, in, in part to ensure that um, there was minimal to no interference when it comes uh, to our airwaves. Uh, it is, uh, I jokingly say it's the agency that no one ever remembers that they know about until there's a wardrobe malfunction at a, at a game <laughs> or, or somebody um, says a three, four, five, and sometimes six and seven letter words <laughs> that I don't even know now. Um, and and, and uh, it's over the air and, and people are upset. Um, but this is an agency that is literally, um, you know, uh, responsible, and I, I will use that word without uh, apology, uh, for, for one-sixth of our nation's economy. Just think about it. I don't care what it is you do uh, and how it is you say it. Um, there is a, a, a technology or communications underpinning in everything you do. Uh, and so this agency um, has some, uh, in it, and, and I know you probably uh, squint, and in, 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 when I say this, dominion, <laughs> you know, oh, oh, over just about everything you do. Um, it is not equal when it comes to uh, your a telephone. Frank has a love of, and is active in the radio space. Um, but when it comes to interstate uh, and international uh, communications, uh, when it comes to U.S. citizens by radio and, uh, and wire, the FCC has some type of, of influence or authority. A, a lot less to, to none when it comes to um, to cable and satellite, but when it comes to your over the air uh, presence, um, uh, we can debate um, uh, when it came to uh, open internet uh, net neutrality <laughs> rules, and of course, as I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, telephone uh, and radio. The FCC is front and center um, there to uh, protect and enable uh, competition, investment, and innovation. Uh, in the telecommunications and technology space. Well, now, the, the, the FCC <coughs> is, is an agency. It always, it always amazes me how it, it, it is very much involved in almost every facet of the industries, many industries right. that, that, it, that it regulates. It gets into you know, everything from you know, uh, ownership, employment, um, you know, uh, it gets into the gas industry, into the uh, in, in, into the uh, tele obviously the telecommunications industry, and we're talking about uh, you Energy. know all of these satellites that you know one of the if you, if you look at what we're doing tomorrow as, right. as you're headed, um, um, we're going to talk about um, satellites and, and and the launching and placements and and and, and how much or, you know it, these um, entities that are making things more small and nimble, you know how much they will pay. So it, it's really very broad. It's right. really very broad. Absolutely, but but one place that it you know, it it, it, it seems like it, 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 it went about, um, you know, keeping a hands-off uh, mm -hmm. approach uh, was with the internet. Yes. Um, and that, that goes back, I think, you know, back to my uh, my days with when Bill Kennard was chairman. Right. Um, and so, you know, w w tell me what has changed. 
what 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 is what is the dynamic new that, that that's new here that that made the FCC want to get involved? The relevance. <laughs> I often pick a word of the day, and I think my word of the day would be relevance. Uh, when in the days of Frank and the FCC, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, when we talked about you know the internet and how um, it uh, where it was and how much it had to do with our everyday lives. Um, it pales in comparison to uh, what it means now. When you think about it, if you are, are a person of limited means, um, in, your, in your particular state or jurisdiction, there is at least one uh, service uh, that you might apply for if you need some type of social service um, that, that you might need that the only way you can sign up for that critical service if, is if you have um, the ability uh, to sign on to the internet. Um, I don't know uh, about you, but um, every time I make a doctor's appointment, um, I, I cannot, you know, calling, writing, you know, begging, that doesn't work. I better fill out things online. I better have a, a connection in order to um, s uh, start the process. When you talk about, uh, you know, finishing your uh, homework, where uh, many teachers, um, uh, when they give assignments, uh, 70, up, upwards of 70% of the information needed to complete that assignment, you know, you need an online presence. When you're talking about uh, bridging the uh, healthcare divide, um, particularly in places where you might not have a clinician, connectivity is essential, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, a psychiatric, psychiatric care, because again, if you have uh, connectivity, and you increasingly must have connectivity to survive in the 21st century, um, you know, that could be a game changer when it comes to that. And if you want to apply for a job, when I was coming up, however long that's been, it's been a long time, uh, when I was your age, I really don't want to go back, but every now and then. Um, I don't want to go back until uh, my knees hurt. Um, but when my knees are not hurting, I do, you know, I, I do, you know, again, you know, remember the fact that uh, when I wanted to apply for a job, I just kind of walked up and filled out an application. That's not how it's done anymore. So, Frank, the difference is what connectivity means in our lives um, in, in, in the 21st century. And the fact that, um, you know, 20, 30 years ago, this was a nascent, um, uh, you know, platform. Uh, we had no idea what it uh, would mean in our lives. And so now, it is essential. You cannot be a productive, engaged, enlightened citizen uh, in, in terms of uh, civic engagement and all of the other uh, 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 silos and, 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 and portfolios and everything that I mentioned and more. You cannot be uh, adequately engaged and informed uh, if you're not connected. So that's the, you know, that's the primary difference, well, let me, relevance. Let, let me ask, because, um, I think that the evolution of the role of the internet and particularly you know, what, what you might call the gatekeepers of the internet, which are the internet service providers, has, <coughs> has increased dramatically over the years. And so the FCC has sort of seen that it, 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 it needs to take perhaps a more proactive role in how those gatekeepers um, allow or affect access to content. But, but what seems to be obviously the major rub here is you know, what, what authority does the right. FCC have to, um, to regulate this, this, this industry segment? There was disagreement between yep. uh, Chairman Wheeler and President Obama. Obviously, I, I, I'm, I don't think I'd go out too much on a limb to say that you and Chairman Pai probably don't uh, approach this the, the, the same way. Uh, you would get an A on that. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, let me back up, you know, a minute, uh, 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 if you would, you know, on that. Um, you know, because you point out some very significant things. So one of the things that I, I, I either implied or uh, hopefully mentioned, but if I failed to do so, the FCC is responsible for just a, basically a handful of things. You know, one is uh, to ensure that um, your public safety. We are definitely responsible uh, uh, for ensuring that uh, when you call 911 and when you need, um, you know, a communications uh, infrastructure or platform in order to get in touch with the uh, first responder that uh, you have the, the means uh, to do so. Um, uh, consumer protections, uh, you know, th that, that's part of our, our portfolio. 
but the one that I want to uh, highlight uh, of, of the four is competition. And the reason why I bring it up in this context that you just mentioned is that for over 50% of us, when it comes to home broadband options, we don't have a choice. There's only one real provider where we live. And so part of my um, disagreement with the current majority is if we were talking about a competitive ecosystem, you, you might get a different type of um, a advocacy or, or point of view um, or, or with Mignon Clyburn. But the fact of the matter remains, regardless of where you live or income, the majority of us do not have choice when it comes to internet service provider. Secondly, we have something called a universal service fund, uh, which uh, the FCC administers. And the one thing that um, Title II, um, uh, that, um, that in, in 2015 we used as a legal uh, foundational authority uh, uh, for um, our uh, net neutrality uh, rules, uh, again in 2015, the Universal Service Fund is nearly $9 billion annually. And one of the things that it does, oh, about half of the fund is devoted to what we now call the Connect America Fund. It's the high cost fund. It enables those uh, uh, places in America that might have more prairie dogs or, or corn stalks than, than people, where the business case cannot be made for um, infrastructure to be built um, on an efficient and affordable uh, way, that we actually allocate monies uh, to those uh, providers in those rural, mostly rural communities um, it, it, to, to be able to make a better business case uh, to provision uh, services, to, uh, to build the infrastructure needed uh, for connectivity. We, because we determined, just like we did back in the day uh, when we had um, you know, rural, the rural electrification, just like we did when, uh, when we established um, baselines for, uh, for clean potable water, uh, you know, uh, just like we, we did when we said everybody deserves a, a dial tone. We have determined uh, that uh, broadband, having a broadband enabled infrastructure for every single American is important. And part of the authority that we use to get there is Title II. And in order for us to be able to administer this fund effectively, we have to have clear-cut authority which Title II that has been held, uh, upheld uh, uh, by the uh, circuit court um, that it uh, made very clear that the FCC can use this authority to do so. Fast forward to last December uh, when the majority repealed um, the net neutrality rules um, and uh, as we know them and, and, and uh, went back uh, uh, to 706, you know, to, to a, an approach that it's been, by the way, I'm not a lawyer, but for those of you who are lawyers and aspiring lawyers, um, that the court kicked back twice. Um, that, that's just not Mignon saying that. That's the court did um, uh, uh, reverse. Uh, look, what authority do we have to administer that high cost fund? I say to you that a very savvy, um, innovative um, startup can say, you know, I think um, th there is no authority, there is no means for the FCC to administer that $4.5, $4 $4.6 million. I'm going to challenge that. And if we lose, if the FCC loses, then we all lose because we don't have the authority to ensure, to build, to enable, to invest in this infrastructure. So it's not just, though this is important, you know, the, the, the sexy part of the debate has been about, you know, access, no fast lanes, um, you know, issues with paid prioritizations, you know, all of the talking points that you've been, been, been hearing that are essential uh, when it comes to, um, you know, your access and, 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 and whether there are gatekeepers controlling uh, your ability um, uh, to, to connect to the essential services uh, using the, the, um, the devices of your choice and, and the like. Your ability uh, uh, to say yes or no as long as, long as you Certain legal baselines, right? Uh, legal content, legal means, legal, legal, legal. Um, but uh, again, if we don't have the authority, clear authority to administer, then I say our whole universal service construct um, is, is vulnerable. And, and, and so it, it, this is really uh, more serious from where I sit than, than we know. So I, I'm, 
I might have gone off a little bit, no, 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 um, no, no. you know, from where you, you wanted you, me to you, go. You, no, no, no. You, and you're right on. Where, where, so you, you touched on and you referenced Title II. And for those who are not familiar with that reference, we, we have a 20-year-old statute on the books, the Telecommunications Act of 96. And it basically, you know, a, a statute that was written back when most of the country was still using dial-up. These things we call smartphones hadn't even, were just a dream in some uh, a scientist's uh, or engineer's head. Um, it divides the world up into telecommunications services, these regulated utilities, and information services. Um, so it, it, what the courts basically said was the only way the FCC could, they could do what they wanted to do was to reclassify these ISPs under Title II, which is the telecommunication nice. services. So my, I guess my question is, is the solution here in Congress? Should we be looking to Congress to, you know, redraft or amend or correct, if you want to use the cor word correct, modernize this 20-year-old statute? So I will say to that, Frank, that um, there would be certainty in that um, because I know a lot of people have pointed out that there is, is, is administrations change. You might have a it's sort of a, a ping pong match um, that you might, uh, uh, if uh, if in a couple of years um, uh, there's a, I'm not advocating. I'm just stating if there's a change um, uh, in the. Uh, uh, presidential makeup um, in, in a couple of years that we could uh, go back to um, the 2015 rules. So I will say that there's a potential for certainty if Congress uh, passes uh, common sense um, rules. I can get away with saying that because I have a member of Congress that I'm close to. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, <laughs> I, there, there's no, there's no, there, I can't hide it. Um, but I will say this, if Congress passes um, a law that does not recognize that the FCC is the expert agency in this field, uh, that um, it, it's the, uh, the one um, that um, has a, a longstanding history when it comes to, to net neutrality and, um, and, and in the communication space, that it could protect in real time as opposed to the Federal Trade Commission that everybody's talking about, um, kind of uh, forecasting and, and preempting what you're, where you're probably uh, are, are headed um, you know, an agency that can only help you after the harm is done, and only if that harm is a result of, um, you know, deceptive or unreasonable practice. The FCC, um, though we are less than perfect, can actually establish rules, rules of the road where everybody can, um, you know, should abide by. The FCC cannot do that. It's not a rulemaking authority. So I always say this in, in, in a joking but serious fashion. I would prefer to be diagnosed than eulogized. <laughs> okay. Um, I, 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 seriously. Lay out the rules of the road. I'm probably, if, it, if it means I have to be a vegan, I'm going to flaunt that. But lay out the rules of the road as to what I should do in terms of, in, in terms of my health. As opposed to, uh, again, me heading straight to the undertaker where now the harm is done. Right. And, and so, I, you know, it, it's a bad joke. It shows a little bit about how quirky I am. But to me, it drives <laughs> the, the point home. That do you want someone to lay out the rules of the road that are clear, that you can follow? And do you want an agency that's a backstop to you in real time that can protect you uh, and, issues and issue rules? Or do you want somebody to decide a couple of years later um, that, oh, there might be a harm. By that time, you're out of business or in a cemetery. So, you know, that, that's, the, uh, that, that's why I'm so passionate about um, what happened prior, uh, where we were prior uh, to uh, 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 December 15th, 14th, 15th, 6th. I can't remember the, uh, the, the date. Was it the 14th? 14th. Thank you. Um, I knew she would know. Um, exactly. The uh, 14th uh, 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 27, uh, uh, of 2017 as opposed to where we're headed um, um, effective um, uh, April 23rd 
um, where some of the rules, uh, the repeals go into place. Well, before we open it up to questions, and I got you, you're okay to take a few questions here uh, before for, before we before we completely wrap up. Let me let me also ask about um, about the states. Um, mm -hmm. There, you know, we we, we you know, people are kicking around. Well, you mm -hmm. know, the F FTC may be the solution here. The Congress may be the solution yeah. here, but I think several states across the country are just taking matters into their own hands and they're going to say, and you're increasingly seeing this not just with net neutrality, right. but a lot of different issues. Right. The states are just saying, whether it's immigration or whatever, we're just going to, um, you even have states handling, uh, going after pirate radio stations, yes. right? Yes, true. Um, so, um, so, you know, it, 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 do, but, but do we, you know, do we really want this patchwork of 50 different net neutrality rules across the country? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? So from where I sit, um, and, and, and I vote it this way, uh, the most efficient answer is to have a unified ecosystem, um, which is what uh, we attempted to do in, in 2015. Um, perfect, no. But it attempted uh, to weigh the need for innovation, investment, uh, uncertainty. I, it got rid of 25 provisions and over 700 rules of the, the days of old. So this is not your mama pops uh, net neutrality. It's, it's not this. It's not the same Title II, I should say. Uh, it's not your mama pop application of uh, of, of Title II. Um, it's different. It, it 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 looked at what the current ecosystem and what we anticipate the ecosystem evolving uh, uh, to. Uh, with enough dexterity to, to, to act in real time and not to be so rigid uh, that we can't uh, uh, protect um, and, and enable innovation and investment. Look, um, Frank, those states acted, are acting. Um, you know, there are a couple of states. I think Washington State signed their own net neutrality um, laws. Um, there's another state I'm forgetting and three others are in a way they're, um, you know, in waiting. Um, there are executive orders that have been signed. Twenty-two attorneys generals, um, you know, have have weighed in. Uh, there's a lot of activity because they're listening to their constituents at home. Because we didn't, meaning the majority of the FCC didn't listen to our constituents at the FCC. Look, of those legitimate comments that were filed, there were 22 millions, and the ones that weren't bots or. Um, you know, persons who stole identities. The majority of them were in favor of the 2015 rules. And for those who took, wrote in longhand, or really wrote personalized um, letters, 98.5% of them were in favor of the 2015 net neutrality rules. The FCC, in its deregulatory mindset, did not listen to the will of the people. It, the majority said very clear that what they were going to pay attention to were those legal briefs. And you know, again, you're going to have job security for years to come. So congratulations on that. Um, but they, they were looking at these detailed submissions as opposed uh, you know, to, to those uh, business owners um, that I met when I visited Etsy in, in Brooklyn who said, you know, I am fearful uh, that uh, this uh, platform uh, that is open uh, for me to do business, that I don't have to uh, you know, hitch up a tent and spend $10,000 uh, 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 in order to go to a trade show or, or something. I don't have to do that anymore. Uh, they're worried. They're worried that this empowering, <laughs> enabling platform will not be as accessible for them as, as, as it was you know, uh, for their children. They're worried. And so you know, that's why this is so significant. And that's why we should have always been paying attention uh, to the FCC with all, all, all due respect. And that is why those states um, are, um, are weighing in, because they're listening to their communities who are fearful um, that there will be no legal means for them to um, get uh, broadband-enabled infrastructure, particularly in rural communities. They're fearful that those entrepreneurs are not going to be able to have the type of dexterity in, uh, that they need to, um, uh, if they have a, a, an online business platform, a model. Uh, they want to protect their citizens. They're listening to their citizens, and that's why we're seeing this. Thank you very much. We have a couple of minutes left, and in the time that we have remaining, uh, I'd like to sort of open it up, see if anybody here, this is your opportunity 
ask a sitting FCC commissioner questions about a pretty hot topic. Here. Yes. Um, thank you for sharing. Absolutely. Uh, given what you mentioned about the sort of FCC's refusal. To, oh, sorry. Given what you mentioned about the FCC's. Sorry, shouting. No, no, I can really hear. Yeah. Given what you mentioned about the FCC's, you know, refusal to really reckon with these millions of comments that consumers submitted during the period leading up to the repeal, just from an advocacy standpoint, I'm really, you know, I'm very passionate about net neutrality, but I do feel a bit. I guess I'm I'm a bit stymied as to where we should be directing our advocacy efforts, given, as you mentioned, the enormous stakes of even paid prioritization. Uh, so I'd be curious to hear your thoughts, just from an both from the consumer advocacy standpoint and maybe from you know a future attorney standpoint. How I guess where where should we be tailoring our advocacy efforts, given what you mentioned, the politicization of the FCC, the stakes, and also this you know kind of ping ponging effect. Right. So this is the one time, um, though it, 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 it might not help me on my, my next career path, this is when I'm, I'm happy that I'm not a lawyer because I can speak more freely. Um, look, there are a number of groups and organizations that are challenging the FCC. There are a number, we mentioned, of jurisdictions that are challenging the FCC. There are pathways of opportunities um, if, if you feel that the majority has made a mistake for your voice to continue, you know, your voices to continue uh, to be heard. So um, the great thing about um, uh, this uh, nation uh, when it comes to boards and commissions uh, 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 like this uh, authority, like the FCC, is we don't have to find a word. So I say the, the, what you have been doing, regardless of what the majority chose to do uh, uh, with the traditional uh, um, a path, um, you cannot, silence is not your friend. Silence will ensure consent. Um, and, and so um, while I have to be careful how I say uh, to advocate, there are plenty of roads of opportunities to continue to be heard. You need to continue uh, to make your voices heard. Yeah. One more question. Thank you so much for your time coming out here. Absolutely. Um, I, I've um, attended a number of events kind of on different sides of the issue, and, and, and I've kind of had a bit of trouble um, from the opposing, uh, let's say, side finding arguments that really make sense to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm wondering, is, is there an argument uh, um, kind of ag against the net neutrality rules okay. that you think makes, makes, uh, makes sense? Not that it's the right balance, but that right. it kind of strikes at something true, perhaps? Um, so I'll try to be, uh, hmm. you're asking me to go outside of my mignon zone. Uh -oh. um, but, I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry. So look, no, 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 and, and, and it, it's a good challenge. I probably will fail, but look, um, what I've heard um, is that, you know, markets, um, are, are, are the markets, open markets, um, a deregulation, it would, would work best. Um, that uh, the internet service provider is not gonna do anything that will stifle or harm uh, their business model. They, 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 they want to serve, they, they want more people to sign up, they, they, want, uh, you know, they want robust uh, participation. Um, and in an ideal world, if we were in an ideal competitive world, and that's why I wanted to make a point of mentioning that, I would be fine. Look, the FCC really does not regulate the mobile phone industry at this juncture. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't because it's considered pretty competitive. But that's why I mentioned the fact that um, more than half of us only have one provider. So if this were a competitive ecosystem, I promise you I, I, I would not be, um, whatever, however some might define me um, when it comes to this debate. But it is not a perfect competitive market. Um, it is a place where, and, and, I, and, and this is important to me also, your inter if, if we were talking about your internet service provider about 12, 15 years ago, that's not the same person providing you service today. Your internet service provider today has a lot of business interests. Uh, they own content, a couple of stations, can I say that out loud? I whispered it. Um, you know, um, they have ancillary businesses uh, that, that compete with others. It is not the same internet service provider of a decade plus ago. So when you talk about not only uh, uh, an entity that has the gateway to, um, the, uh, again, this incredible platform, but they have 
side and ancillary and other business interests um, that might require that do require an online presence. That if they were to use their power and influence, um, their market power and influence, could stifle um, uh, you know others who might be competitors. That's the issue here. So again, perfect case of you know you know deregulatory construct. Skies and limit imperfections when it comes uh, to um, you know a marketplace is where agencies like the FCC are supposed to come in to protect. We are the substitution, meaning regulation is a substitution uh, where competition does not exist or where uh, you know there there might be marketplace uh, poten potentials for harm. And again, I say um, when when people say that this is a solution in search of a problem. I'm going back to my first example of, of you know, whether you, whether you want a prescription or a tombstone. You know, acting in real time, having clear rules of the road, ensuring that there's innovation, competition, and, and inclusion. All of those things are important for a robust marketplace. And until you get to nirvana from a competition standpoint, you need regulatory uh, backstop uh, in order to protect, enable, um, and to incent um, investment. All right, and thank that'll you. be the last word. Thank you. I want to thank Commissioner. I hope, I hope all, all of you will stay for the panel that is about to follow in, 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 in a short moment. But uh, uh, please, again, allow me to thank Ask our panelists to uh, uh, come up here and, uh, and and join me for the next phase of our discussion here. Y'all think that I grew up in a cave. I <laughs> you mentioned that uh, uh, what is commissioner's advisor is a GW law grad, so um, good to know. Um, I have uh, with me here a uh, what I think is going to be an excellent panel to uh, uh, to follow up on the Q and A that we just had with the, with the commissioner, and I'd like to do this in a very, very informal fashion because um, uh, I, I'm going to, you know, basically just throw questions out and try to get a discussion going. But as we move along, if, uh, uh, if, if any members of the audience would like to ask their own questions and, and get into the mix, uh, I, I want this to be interactive and, 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 and of interest to everyone. Um, uh, I'm going to give you some uh, uh, brief introductions here. Um, I have to my uh, uh, immediate right, uh, your left, uh, uh, Keenan Adamchek, who, as I mentioned earlier, I have to take my glasses off when I read these things because that's that, that's the, that's the stage in life that I'm in. Um, um, he is a, a, a graduate of, a, of the GW Law School in the class of 2014. Uh, he's an attorney with Fletcher, Heald, and Hildreth, uh, uh, where he's been with us uh, since September of 2016, after two years at, a, at another boutique telecommunications firm, and he represents clients on a wide variety of telecommunications issues, including federal and state transactions, voice over uh, internet protocol, um, competitive local exchange carriers, inter-exchange carriers, li licensing, registration. And, uh, and a variety of other regulatory uh, issues. Um, to uh, Keenan's right, as uh, many of you may uh, recognize, Ron Brown, because he is actually currently a student here at uh, 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 at the law school. Um, Devron is uh, 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 a uh, born and raised in Las Vegas. Uh, he received his uh, his BA in criminal justice uh, uh, from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Um, he is currently serving as the senior publications editor for the Federal Communications Law Journal. Um, and I should also mention that when uh, Keenan was a student here, uh, he also served uh, uh, with the Federal Communications Law Journal. And I think one of the reasons why we're 
doing this panel and hope to do more is to highlight the fact that the, the law school now houses the, the journal, and I think that's it's really a big deal because I, 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 I've been practicing in this in, in the world of uh, communications law for a long time. I've seen the law journal go from UCLA to Indiana, so the fact that you know, Indiana University, so the fact that uh, GW has and has had the uh, journal for a while now is uh, uh, really a, a, a a, 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 a big deal and, and something that the, the university should be proud of. And last but absolutely not least, someone who almost needs no uh, introduction is Professor Don Nunziato, who we are very, very delighted and uh, honored to have with us here. Uh, uh, Professor Nunziato is an internationally recognized expert in the area of free speech and the internet. Her primary teaching and scholarship interests are in the areas of internet law, free speech, and digital copyright. She recently published her book, Virtual Freedom, Net Neutrality, and Free Speech in the Internet Age. And she's lectured and written extensively on issues involving free speech and the internet. She's taught internet law courses and lectured on internet free speech issues around the world, including at Oxford, uh, Munich uh, Intellectual Property Law Center, uh, Tsinghua University in Beijing, and the Instituto Tecnológico Autónomo de México. I actually, I'm, 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 I, I think I did that half, not half bad, um, <laughs> in Mexico City. Um, she received, she's been in, uh, an, an invited presenter and speaker at Yale, Oxford, University of Pennsylvania, Georgetown, Vanderbilt, and the University of Virginia, uh, some lesser institutions that uh, that you may be familiar with, among others. Um, so we are very, very delighted to have you. I, I will mention off the script here, and I told her earlier that I do some mentoring uh, here at the law school with uh, law students, and I have yet to meet anyone here at the law school that when I mention Professor Nunziato's name, they go, oh, I love her, because she's wonderful, she's great. So, you know, you're she's doing something right here. Uh, I appreciate that. So I'm going to actually uh, uh, kick it off here to really sort of revisit perhaps some of the questions that um, that, uh, uh, that 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 I flew past Commissioner Clyburn because after all she's an FCC commissioner, which probably means that you know she's going to come at this with a slightly different uh, spin than than us than than, than we will. So let, let me uh, just start maybe um, maybe start with uh, uh, with. With, with you, Keenan, or you, mm -hmm. Devon, um, wh what is your take on net neutrality, and and what is the goal of net neutrality? What what why is this such a big deal? Tell us what it what what it's all about. Well, I think about net neutrality from the perspective of how the internet functions um, in, in its current state, and as Commissioner Clymer mentioned earlier, um, legislation is typically the solution people point towards when thinking about net neutrality. But if we're going to point towards Congress. Uh, I think there's three necessary that are that are required for there to be a successful solution. And I think that local municipalities need to be able to um, have the, the the right to create their own broadband frameworks within this within this in this in this industry to provide more support to their communities, and that dovetails into uh, rural access to the internet, as she mentioned about how you can apply for a job online or accessing major social services through the internet. And then additionally, uh, I think that goes into uh, something the FCC is doing a lot of work on right now is FirstNet. So if we're going to talk about net neutrality, I think it's important to recognize that while a unified ecosystem is an important goal of net neutrality, I think it's also important to have some deviations to let states know what's best for the individual communities they exist in. Right, but let me ask, I mean, we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I was at the commission in the late 90s. Clinton was in the White House. We have a uh, Democrat as the chair of the FCC, and we put out a published article, a published white paper called um, um, the non-regulation of the, the FCC and the non-regulation. So ba ba the idea being we're going to, we're going to take a hands off of this thing. And that's sort of the status quo mm -hmm. for, you know, uh, what, you know, 20 years uh, until um, the tail end of the Obama administration where we have a very we have an F another Democrat who very reluctantly imposes um, Title II regulation to try to wh why you know why did we have to why do we have to do this um, what, what 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 changed 
I think what changed is what uh, Commissioner Clyburn said earlier was the fact that, you know, the ubiquity of the internet. Uh, you know, back in 1999, the internet was still kind of this uh, thing that nerds used, you know, or maybe use it for work or whatever, you know. Internet now has taken such an important, all-encompassing presence in our lives to the point where we have to start realizing that, as the commissioner suggested, there, there are uh, members of our society that need uh, need to be protected in their ability to use the internet because they won't be able to access social resources. They won't be able to apply for a job. The, the internet has come to a level of such an importance where we have to set the rules of the road. If not, we don't have a functioning civil society. And in order to do that, you have to uh, set rules of the road related to competition and related to uh, consumer protection, two sides of the same coin. Okay. Um, can I, can professor, I yes, but please, absolutely. Yeah, I just, and this sort of goes back to Kayvon's question to the commissioner, perhaps, like, uh, how would you frame the argument uh, opposed to net neutrality, mm -hmm. and also tying into Frank's question? Um, one way to, to frame that argument, which I do not espouse, is that we have not had a strong net neutrality regime in existence, right? I mean, we've had a hands-off the internet approach for right. 20 years, and that's what Commissioner Pai would argue, right? Like, we're returning to a hands-off the internet regime. And I'm just looking at my, my calculations. Um, I think it was the in June 2016 that the DC Circuit upheld the 2015 open internet order, and then December 2017 that it was uh, intended to be right. repealed. So maybe we've had a year and a half of strong open internet order net neutrality uh, regime, mm -hmm. and then prior to that, we haven't mm -hmm. for, for, for many, many years. And again, I'm a proponent of strong uh, net neutrality regime, but the opponents would say, We've done just fine with the hands off the internet approach for lo these many years. So get out of the business of regulating, it's unnecessary. But was it was it entirely hands off? Or I mean, because the thing the, the the phrases that I kept hearing kicked around even back during the uh, Obama administration and Chairman Wheeler was we're gonna we're gonna do a, a soft touch, a light touch, right? Mm -hmm. Light touch regulation here. Um, and of course, whenever they try to do a, a, a light touch regulation, you know, uh, Verizon or Comcast would march into court and and, and then basically, you know, get their light touch thrown out. Right. I guess what my question is, um, are, are we in an all or nothing um, mm. uh, world because we're shackled to this legislation that doesn't let us do something that's you know middle of the road. Is there an, is there another solution Title here? Title two or bust? You mean? Yeah. 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 Is, is is that is that the problem here? I mean, is is the FCC? It's not a, it's not an FCC problem. It's a legislation problem. Mm -hmm. Well, I, to, to Keenan's point earlier is how society is changing, where people have access to the internet. I think also within the last five to ten, ten to five years, what people do on the internet is so vastly different. A net neutrality makes total sense for content-based communications, which is emails, web pages, um, and, and news sites. But when you think about Facebook and Netflix and Instagram and all these apps that carry data, I mean, that carry video, video content is so much, it's, 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 it's so burdensome on the internet for service providers to carry. And this is to the point earlier as to what is a, 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 an argument against net neutrality. And I think that it's that right there to where it costs more money to send a, these five million cat videos across the internet to, to, for people to enjoy because um, the, 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 the data that you send in the packets across the internet for text travel about the same speed and if one is late, it's okay. But for, for video, I, I tried to watch an NBA video today from the, the playoffs last night and literally took forever to get, get the sound up to speed to make it stop buffering and I'm sitting there thinking like, well, why, why, why can't I watch this video right now? And it's because of how much it, content it takes to push across the internet to give, to give us what we want. So from that perspective, net neutrality, I think to, to, to Professor Nunziato's point is that we need to look at the internet differently before we look at um, 
the, we need to look at what people are doing on the internet differently before we look at the internet itself as a different construct from 20 years ago. Yes. And maybe also in response to Frank's point, um, maybe there, there had been, uh, even in the hands off the internet period, this threat of if you're ISPs, broadband providers, if you're not on your best behavior, we're going to swoop in yeah. and regulate. Um, and now we maybe we don't have that that same threat. That's a, a realistic threat. Right now they have free reign to do what they want because they know the current FCC will allow them give the, them their, that free reign. Right. Yeah. McKenzie. Yes. Um, okay. First of all, great to see you guys. You're all doing great. Um, <laughs> so on the point that I think is this on? Okay, the Devron was kind of speaking we can to you. Yeah. Can you guys flesh out the argument about how net neutrality will still be a good thing when we have telehealth? So when information needs to get there really quickly, real time, when it's you know something as serious as like a patient's blood level, if they have diabetes or sugar level, excuse me. And then moreover, with um, smart cities. So you know you need a light to change really quickly, so there won't be a traffic you know a traffic pile up. So how the, my question is. How will net neutrality, if you could flesh out the net argument for net neutrality as we see all these advancements over the internet? Does that make sense? So, uh, well, let me respond this way by saying that opponents of net neutrality argue that it's, it's necessary to have net discrimination for things like, you know, sort of um, telemedicine and remote surgery, right? So that's one of their strongest arguments and that we need to be able to allow for paid prioritization to allow for specialized functions like that to go forward, right? Is that? Yes. I mean, if, you, if you're looking at the issue of uh, open cities and sort of more localized and varying needs of, uh, of internet access, broadband access, that sort of thing, does that actually lend credence to the argument that, well, maybe this should be handled by the states. Maybe this, you know, because what New York needs may not be the same as what Tulsa, Oklahoma needs. I mean, is, 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 is the FCC the wrong place for this to be, you know, Commissioner Clyburn mentioned something really interesting, which was she said, well, the FCC is the right place because if, it, if you go to the Federal Trade Commission, um, they, they are going to, what the, what the Federal Trade Commission does is they swoop in after the problem, after you've, after you've already had the accident, right? They clean up the mess. They don't prevent the mess. We prevent the mess, she said. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if your objective is to prevent the mess, um, is that you know where's the best place to handle that? Is that is that is that is the FCC the best place? Maybe maybe what the states are doing is the right way to go about this. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Wow. I mean, I I uh, I would love to talk more about preemption. I think it's sure. important for us to try to. Well, get I think they're very intertwined, right? You know right. what I mean? Definitely. Right. So um, the preemption issue comes up. Because, as the commissioner mentioned, and as Frank was discussing, uh, a number of states are now uh, enacting, proposing legislation to regulate net neutrality, um, and or doing it through executive orders uh, in their capacity as consumers uh, and, and through their proc procurement arrangements. So we have that. Um, and we have the, the FCC, in its December order, arguing that those state regulatory measures are preempted, that the FCC is both not regulating and deregulating and also preempting states' efforts to regulate. So the question is, can the FCC have it both ways, right? I mean, that's a sort of simple way of phrasing it, but can the FCC say, we're not regulating and you can't regulate either because we're by not regulating, we're also regulating enough to preempt anyone else from regulating. My experience with the FCC is that they always want it both ways. Mm -hmm. they, they, <laughs> they have a long, proud history of like being have it both ways. And I can, I, I, I think, you know, to to be honest, I, I think the reason why they put out that white paper these twenty years ago now um, was basically to say, yeah. 
this is our jurisdiction and what what we've decided to do is not regulate um, we can regulate but we're not we're, we, 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 we have de deliberately decided to not regulate and and, and just to, to, to give you a little historical perspective here um, it it came up in the context of it, this was a time um, yeah, you know, I, I, I shudder to think where most of you were back then. You were probably all, you know, you know still on, on a playground somewhere. But, but when when a big a big issue was opening up the networks of the of the baby bells of the of the now broken up AT and T, right? You had AT and T monopoly had under Title II had just been broken up, had um, um, uh, and and the idea was we're going to open up these networks so that we can have competing phone companies. You're going to actually, God, have more than one phone company. I mean, think, think, that was unheard of up until then. So somebody came up with the idea with, well, if we're going to do this to the phone companies. I think maybe we should do this to the internet. And everyone's like, hmm, wow, let's, let's think. But we decided not to do that. Now, to, to go to the argument here, the, the, the contrarian argument, uh, there are people who say, well, but for that election to not to not regulate, you know, we wouldn't have a Facebook today. We wouldn't have a, a Netflix today. We wouldn't have Google today. Look at the, the the immense corporate, you know, presence, organization, employment, tax revenue, et cetera, et cetera, that have been generated as a result of not regulating. Do you want to mess with that? What's the counter to that argument? I mean, is this, are you going to, uh, you know, kill the goose that laid the golden egg? I mean, I'm just be, uh, I'll, I'll play uh, a chairman pie. Right, I mean, one, one response is, it depends on what the regulation is. Right. And if the regulation is le level playing field for everyone, um, incumbents and startups alike, then I don't think you have that powerful an argument that um, that sort of regulation would hamper, um, you know, in, investment. Right. And to that point also, uh, I think we have to think about um, interconnection and paid peering to where you have uh, Google and Netflix and all the major players. They have uh, a system already in with Comcast and in with the, major, with, the uh, with the service providers. So to, to that point, uh, that that is a form of net neutrality, and I think it was 2014 when you had the whole Netflix Comcast dispute, where they were charging Netflix. I mean, I don't know what the cost was, but in, in Netflix size, it was exorbitant amounts just to get better content to the consumers. So at that point, right, the cost is passed on to the consumers. You know, when Netflix changed, the, I canceled my Netflix when the price went up from 7.99 to 12.99 because I was like, I, I don't want to pay for that. So at, at that point. Aren't we already acquiescing into net neutrality when we put when we allow Google and we allow uh, YouTube, well YouTube and Google and Comp and uh, Netflix to put these interconnected servers within the service providers? Okay. Any questions uh, to, for, for, for for the groups here that like to chime in to, 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 to flesh any of this out? Well, let me turn to uh, uh, another more practical consideration question here, which is. Um, there's obviously a lot of economics involved in uh, in, in, in how uh, the internet is regulated. Um, uh, another big argument that has been um, put forward is uh, well, you know, the, the internet service providers, whether it's whether it's Comcast or Verizon or whoever, have said, you know, we've invested a lot of money in laying fiber. T-Mobile putting up towers, um, buying Spectrum, you know, we, we're the ones that are there investing the money, building out the infrastructure, and um, um, now you want to create rules that are going to make it, you know, difficult for, for us to have a return on our investment. Um, is that an, a criteria that regulators and legislators should be using <coughs> to determine whether or not they should be acting uh, in, in regulating this sort of business? I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? It, it reminds me of the um, uh, uh, of the, the takings argument that the um, <laughs> that the broadband providers made about their pipes. Right? These are our pipes. 
These, these are, we own them, and you can't tell us what to do with our pipes. And if you regulate our pipes, we are going to argue that it constitutes a regulatory taking of, um, if, if you regulate by virtue of net neutrality or otherwise, that's you telling us what we can do with our property, and that violates the Constitution. So, Which I don't agree with that argument, but that's uh, an argument that has been made. But okay, but but uh, but um, I think what, what are your thoughts? Well, I think the counter argument to that that uh, is in support of net neutrality regulation is the fact that well now you are you have the market power to to uh, control the market and to stifle competition, and that wasn't the case 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. So you've changed. The market's changed. You're not the same person as you were 20 years ago. Well, by person, I mean the, the, the internet service providers. The corporations are people. Right? Yeah, they are. Yeah. That's what I, I wasn't going to go there. But yeah. That's a, another topic for another day. But yeah. So necessarily what was true in the past is not true today anymore. That, I think that's the argument why the, 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 this needs to be regula regulated. And to, uh, the, it's kind of getting at the same idea. But on it, in a to totally uh, different way, you know, we needed to have hands off in 1996-98 to uh, allow the internet to grow and to uh, to expand and to prosper and to innovate. But now, it's a different ballgame. You know, it, the reverse is now true. We need regulation to allow the internet to grow, to continue, to prosper. Just because the whole fundamental nature, fundamental nature of the market has changed, there are m more stakeholders involved constantly more and more, and you just need to keep the uh, playing field even. I think that's the argument for net neutrality. Yeah. See, I, yes, oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so, hi, okay, sorry, another question. Yeah. So as to this market discussion, um, one argument against net neutrality regulation that I have heard that I also disagree with is that, so basically the, the theory is strong net neutrality protections will raise the cost of internet and that will harm access because there is like, as you panelists have discussed, and as Commissioner Kleiber mentioned, there like there's an access gap. But you know, so these I guess anti net neutrality regulation folks say, well, what do you say to the fact that your precious little net neutrality is going to it won't advance access? I guess that that's a sticking point for me because I do I I guess the access and the net neutrality are two sides of the same coin, right? Like broadband access, it, you know, I, I see those as very interconnected. But I do think there's perhaps some teeth to that argument in that. If we do impose really stringent net neutrality protections, it may, in some ways, you know, I, I don't know how this would happen, but you know, boost the cost of some people's internet, which might price out people who already have a hard time at paying to access the internet or live in a rural place where they can't even get broadband access. So I guess I'd be curious to hear, folks, what you know, how, what is the reason response to that? Because to me, that's a bit of a, it's hard to argue against that other than from a kind of like absolutist net neutrality standpoint. I, I, I've heard this argument before because I think it uh, relates to, or as uh, uh, Frank mentioned earlier, is that the telecommunication industry built the, the foundation for the internet to exist. So they had to go through all the regulatory hurdles to lay fiber, to go through the auctions, to try to get access to universal service funds, to have to put down fiber and wires in places where they're not going to make any profit. Whereas Facebook comes in and just develops a website and they make a billion dollars. And they have no, they have far less restrictions and far less hurdles to jump through than, than the, the uh, telecommunications industry. So at that point, that's just playground unfairness mm -hmm. to where that we, we have to go, we have to spend so much money on lobbying and our efforts here to where that Facebook doesn't have to do that. So if you're going to require us to do even more to provide what we already are providing, then yeah, it's going to disenfranchise the, 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 the disenfranchise the oppressed people. I, um, I I have to say I, I when I when I hear these arguments um, and mind you in the interest of full disclosure I was I was in the I was in the Clinton administration right so although I'm playing pie I don't do it very well um, but I you know I've heard these arguments whether it's you know whether they're building railroads to the west mm. or whether it's standard oil drilling for oil, you know, to keep the industrial revolution, you know, exploding or whether it's Henry Ford, you know, putting these new metal chariots on the, you know, it's like we are building the infrastructure, don't don't mess with us mm -hmm. because you're going to kill it. Um, 
And I think it's it's a it's a difficult balance, right? That 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 has to be made. Uh, but when you do this, I, I've all I, 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 when I'm sitting in a hotel room, I just came back from it. I was just at the NAB out in Las Vegas, and I, I'm in a, sitting in a hotel room. And my hotel gives me these options. I can I can get free internet access, for, for, you know, at this level. If I want more bandwidth, I pay this. If I want more bandwidth, I'm gonna pay that. And I'm thinking, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm I'm basically in a little mini bubble here with no net neutrality, right? I mean, basically, I, I'm th th this hotel is being permitted to throttle and uh, and to charge me for that throttling. But then and, you can lose your hot tire. Too. Well, I also <laughs> I also sit there and I think to myself, okay, well, is this a bad thing? I mean, I go to a gas station and I have you know regular premium and super, right? And they don't charge me the same amount for each one. Um, you know, I I, 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 I I don't know. I mean, I think that's one of the things that, that, that are, I, I, I do believe that um, it's an, this is an issue that has become hyper, in my humble opinion, hyper politically charged, right? So you had a situation where, and I don't, you know, I, I, I found this to be um, unfortunate, where um, the, the chairman of the FCC, you know, canceled his trip to a consumer electronic show because he was getting death threats. Um, and, you know, so I think, to, and I have to sit down, I have to think to myself sometimes, you know, uh, are, are, are the people who are really politically charged over this thing, do they really know what we're talking about here? Because this isn't... Um, I'm probably going to get death threats just for saying this, but this is this is not lead in the water in Flint, right? Mm -hmm. This is the access to my to my to my to my Netflix. But but there are people for whom this is a life or death thing. I get that. I absolutely get that. So you know, I, I don't you know, I have to sort of measure what 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 the balance is here. Um, I don't know. Do you, do you? I mean, I I I. I personally think that the solution here is legislative. Um, I, I think that what we're dealing with here is with a you know a 20 year old statute that was written at the time when the big dog in town was AOL, mm -hmm. right? And AOL, Time Warner, like sucked the air out of the room, and that's like seems like ancient history now. Do, do you guys agree with that, or I don't know? What are your thoughts on that? I think legislation is going forward the only way we can have rules that will yeah. stand the next 20 years until we probably need another set of rules because who the heck knows right. what kind of technology is going to happen going forward. Right. I mean, because right now when it's the FCC imposing regulation, you're, it's, it's this in-between. To, to the general public, it almost seems illegitimate because some administrative body is opposed, that is unelected is imposing these regulations upon the industry. And when it comes from Congress instead, it kind of arguably has a higher level of legitimacy and it sets a kind of a, a, a firmer tone that can't as easily be overturned. So, and it creates better guidelines for the FCC to live up to those statutes, to, to live up to what their mandate is to actually regulate this area. Yeah. And I think going forward, that, that's the only path that's, that can be found. And that yeah. sort of raises the question that I was thinking about um, when uh, the commissioner was speaking to us about how how democratically accountable the FCC mm -hmm. should be, mm -hmm. right? Because one of the things we heard a lot about was that the commissioner Commissioner Pai was um, not taking into account comments that were received, right. right? So is is that the proper function of the FCC to just sort of take <coughs> take in millions of comments and then kind of tally them up and say, well, there's 80% in favor of net neutrality, so we will enact you know strong net neutrality rules. Is that maybe I'll ask Frank <laughs> the, his thoughts on on this question? Is that is that the function of the FCC to be a democratically accountable institution or not? And if I may. Um, how does that uh, how does that factor in when you think about things like indecency and profanity regulation? I mean, if we had eighty percent of people write into the FCC and say, you know, we really don't care much about 
indecency and profanity on TV anymore. We don't care about wardrobe malfunction. Can you just stop doing that, FCC? Right. So is there is there some tension there? Well, there's, I mean, I, the, you know, the, 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 the Federal Communications Commission, like many, in the, you know, independent agencies of its ilk, are, you know, are, are they're ostensibly creatures of Congress. Mm -hmm. um, they they are uh, accountable to the Administrative Procedure Act. Mm -hmm. Some of you may have run into that on occasion, <laughs> and you know, in, in, in this institution, and you know, they 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 they're under the APA. There is a process, right, mm -hmm. where you know the notice and comment. You 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 allow the public to 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 weigh in, and um and it and 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 the agency is deliberately set up so that you have. I mean. Commissioner Clyburn's a Democrat, right? Um, there is another Democrat, so uh, you have you have a, you have an agency where the president must appoint at least two members from a party other than his own. It's, it's actually kind of interesting. It doesn't have to be the other major party. Everybody was wondering whether Trump was going to appoint somebody from like, you know, the. Uh, some third party or something like that, but 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 bottom line is, you know, you have this the, 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 this mix up. Could could the agency just you know disregard the comments that 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 it gets <coughs> in uh, on that sort of thing? I mean, I think you have you know you have a, a very uh, powerful argument. Um, that it, you know, that 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 it, that it could have been arbitrary and capricious. Is it arbitrary? That's what I was going to ask. Is Absolutely. it arbitrary to sort well, of ignore eighty percent of the comments? Well, and and, and this a take them into account. This a this, this FCC um, um, ran into a hurdle that by this FCC, I'm talking about the Pi FCC, where you have three Republicans and two Democrats, ran into a, a big hurdle because it was doing. Just the opposite of what it's of what the Wheeler FCC did, right? Mm -hmm. And it had to come up with a rational basis for doing literally a 180 degree turn. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it faced the possibility <laughs> of a court challenge where somebody would say that was arbitrary mm -hmm. and capricious because this agency has tons of. Uh, you know, notice and comment substantiating why Title II made sense, and here it's, you know, gone completely the opposite way. So a big part of what this agency had to do was to paper over um, this sudden and pretty dramatic shift in, 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 their, in their position. Otherwise, they, they were vulnerable. And they can't just say, we got a new commissioner. That's why. It's, yeah, it's not good enough because who, you know, this, this isn't a pie regulation. It's not a Wheeler regulation. It's an FCC regulation. And, the, and, it, and as far as the D.C. Circuit is concerned, the FCC is the FCC is the FCC, right? As far mm -hmm. as the, pub, the public is entitled to rely on an agency which may have course corrections depending on who's in the White House, but is entitled to have some level of consistency mm -hmm. in the way they do things and, and to be able to rely on those things. And do, does the fact that, you know, we've had two, two dissenting commissioners on wh whichever way they, the, the FCC comes out, does that factor into the arbitrary and capriciousness challenge? Um, I mean, I, 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 I think it's certainly the, 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 the dissenting commissioners mm. um, are, are, are good at giving a court a lot of legal arguments as to why something should be overturned. I mean, this is not, this is, this is a, a story as old as time, but, you know, back when Michael Powell, um, Colin Powell's son, who was a Republican, had been the chairman of the FCC for years, you know, he had two Democrats who were dissenting, just like we have today. Um, um, and those Democrats did a very, very effective job of undercutting what Powell was trying to do by giving the, 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 the federal courts the, the arguments that they need, needed to, mm -hmm. to, to, to reverse that. And likewise, the current chairman of the FCC was one of the two dissenting Republicans when Wheeler, mm -hmm. you know, adopted. Uh, w one thing that I found interesting um, is, uh, and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts about this, is because I think people forget the history of this. Um, you, 
when, when Obama was president, you had um, the, the chairman of the FCC was, 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 was Chairman Wheeler. Wheeler was adamantly against reclassifying internet service providers as public utilities. He did not want to go there. He wanted to regulate them. He wanted to, um, you know, force them to, you know, uh, 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 not engage in these back door, back room negotiations. And, and but he did not want to take that that step. And the, the the dilemma he kept running into was every time he tried to do it under Title One, it was thrown in his face by the courts. The court said, "Sorry, you you can't do it unless you reclassify them." Um, when Obama, a lot of people say that because you know, it was an election year and there was a growing outcry, Obama went public for the first time and said, no, I think we ought to go Title II. And Wheeler, in a very famous speech, said, you know what, this agency is accountable to Congress. It's not accountable to the White House. We don't an I don't answer to you. I answer to Congress. Um, and and it sucked the air out of the room. There was where there was going to be a constitutional crisis until Obama literally called Wheeler to the woodshed, called him to the White <laughs> House, and had a a a sit down, right, as the mafia calls it, and uh, and then uh, and then suddenly Wheeler abruptly changed his tune. Right? I don't know what was said behind that door, but you know, but but it was certainly was enough to suddenly get uh, a chairman Wheeler to come out with his tail between. So I guess my question is, you know, how arbitrary and capricious was that, right? To have uh, suddenly a, uh, uh, a White House turn the screws on an independent agency. Well, to, to, the, to the point about uh, <coughs> solutions, um, uh, as far as legislation, I'll, I'll take the, the minority opinion. I don't think legislation will be the solution. I think the current law, it, it has worked in this light touch form for the last 20 years. So if it could be expanded to include, um, uh, if, if the powers could be broadened, I think the issue that Tom, uh, Commissioner Wheeler faced where he has to go answer to the White House and the politicalization of the FCC, um, I think from there, their rulemaking authority uh, makes sense. But the, my, my issues with Congress as someone who worked in Congress is the technology gap. I think Commissioner Rosenstrom, uh, I always say her name wrong, uh, mentioned this last week, as we all seen in the hearings, where most people just don't know how the internet works. Uh, so from there, I, I, I just. Reason to be skeptical. It's, it, yeah. Yeah. And we, we heard that a lot last week um, in, in the context of um, the Facebook's testimony before right. Congress, right, that there's this real technology yeah. gap. And can we really trust Congress to update the Telecommunications right. Act and, and get it right? Well, so it's it's going to be a bill from the House Energy and Commerce Committee, and, and the experts there are going to send it to the Senate Committee, and, and, and that's going to be it. I, I, that, I'm just really hesitant to think that Congress, this Congress, or any future Congress, will be able to pass a comprehensive Telecommunications Act bill that includes, the, that, that is flexible enough to allow the Internet to continue to grow at the pace it's grown. I, 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 I don't think you're going to see a rewrite. I mean, you know, I remember when the Telecom Act of 96 was adopted, and it was, it was, it was not, you know, it was even bigger than this big tax legislation we just had mm -hmm. now, I mean, this, or, 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 or Obamacare. I mean, this was massive, yeah. and it took forever. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think what the, the, the best hope here is going to be some kind of targeted um, – uh, legislation. You have this uh, bill p bouncing around right now. It's called the uh, the Open Internet Preservation Act, right. um, which some people think it doesn't go far enough. But basically, you know, it, it is targeted on some of the throttling issues, you know, the, 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 the net neutrality issue, blocking, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And I think something like that, because, again, I think both sides, there the big issue is going to be, does it go far enough? And, and, and I think if you're if you're haggling over that, you you actually have a possibility of passing, right? I mean, then you can you can reach some kind of uh, uh, hopefully middle ground. And uh, my understanding is that the Open Internet Preservation Act also would preempt state efforts to to regulate. Right. So that would be 
you know, shutting down all the, the state's efforts to, to regulate net neutrality, shutting down the sort of patchwork um, problem, if you think it's a problem, and um, going part of the way to implement uh, some net neutrality regulations. But my understanding is also that um, paid prioritization would be allowed under the Open Internet Preservation Act. And maybe others can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But to the extent that pay prioritization is seen as a big problem and something that I think Obama spoke out against and John Oliver and all of his right. <laughs> comment, commenters spoke out against, um, that, would, that problem would not be fixed under the, uh, this proposed legislation. So, Any questions? Anybody like to chime in here? Um, during the period uh, uh, when the net neutrality, uh, uh, you know, uh, Title II provisions were, were in place, um, even then I saw um, efforts by, um, by, by Internet service providers to sort of, you know, to, to, to skate around it. Industry is 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 relentless, right? I mean, they 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 will they will scream at a at a, at a new regulatory regime, but once it's there, they, they'll put their, their 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 lawyers and their economists and their business people to work to run around. So I started seeing these ads. Maybe some of you started seeing these ads from T-Mobile. I think it was T-Mobile. Right. T um, where they would say, if you um, if you want to stream you. you if you want to stream Netflix on your phone, um, you can do it without data charges. I don't know if anybody saw that, but uh, and I've met that, so I'm thinking, wait a second, how, how are they doing that? They're, they're not supposed to be allowed to do that, right? I mean, because that is a classic example of steering eyeballs towards Netflix mm -hmm. in exchange for what is presumably a, a, a deal that was cut between you know, presumably Netflix. Uh, Netflix said to 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 T-Mobile. To, to, to you know, we'll we'll pick up the tab on that on, on those data charges. Okay. Let us pay for it. Um, and so they basically what they what T-Mobile what what Netflix did was they bought the ha the house around the drinks. Right? Uh, they said you watch our movies and and we'll pay for it. Um, you know, I guess where I'm going with this is okay. What's the slippery slope? Where, where, where are we going? What, what, what's the nightmare that's going to happen here in the next uh, uh, couple of years? Uh, are, are, is, is, is without a net neutrality regime, and let's assume for a moment that that the Open Internet Preservation Act doesn't get passed. Um, does not get it, passed. It does not get passed. Mm -hmm. Or I mean, is 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 something really bad going to happen? To the to the point about the T-Mobile uh, metaphor. One thing I always think about, and I always wonder where the net uh, net neutrality advocates were. It was a metaphor. That was a business. Yeah. Thing, right. I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, is that when Apple was slowing down old iPhones in order to support newer iPhone models? Well, that that and, and from my perspective, that is net neutrality. Right. Said so I have to opt I have to opt in and pay for this new fancier iPhone two years after I, I bought my previous iPhone just to get access to faster servers and to, to, to use my phone. So um, to the to the net neutrality regime, I think it, I think you ca encapsulated it earlier. It's just it's, it's a political issue. It's almost like gun rights now. It, yeah. It, and and Frank, was your example an example of zero rating? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was I was actually trying in my head to figure out what um, what 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 basket to put it in. So I exemption mean, from data caps. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And, and my understanding was that um, uh, the 2015 Open Internet Order didn't expressly prohibit zero rating, and so it was kind of zero rating practices were in this somewhat uh, uh, uncertain legal status. Um, of course, uh, now um, with the, the repeal, zero rating plans and, and packages can go forward. Um, I guess there are some states like California would prohibit zero rating as a violation of net neutrality under its proposed legislation. Um, but I, I sort of feel like the FCC n never said, even prior to, to um, Chairman Pai, never said expressly 
we are prohibiting zero rating. Right. I definitely agree. Yeah. Okay. Gray area. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, the way I I I get you know people come to me all the time and say so you know. What, what's going on with net neutrality? Are the good guys going to win or the bad guys going to win? Uh -huh. um, and I have to take a step back and I'm like, okay, um, this is sort of, uh, this is how it's sort of being portrayed. And I, 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 and maybe this is a very, very cynical point of view for some, but I, I, I frequently see this as sort of a battle between two, you know, clusters of enormous publicly traded companies, right? Uh, I mean, I, I do. I mean, I, I, I mean, on the one, I, I see on the one, I, I see, okay, you've got, you've got, you know, uh, Verizon, you know, Comcast, Cox, and, you know, whatever, T-Mobile, you know, battling against Netflix, uh, uh, Facebook, Google, and whoever, right? It's, it's really not the big guy against the little guy. It's just, it's a group of big guys or against another group of big guys. I mean, it, is there any accuracy to that? Or am I just like, am, am I just turning into this bitter old man? <laughs> I, I think that's accurate because you have Verizon acquiring companies like Oath to do data analytics, and then you have Facebook producing television shows. <laughs> right. So you, it, it's everybody, everybody's, everybody wants to be everybody. You know, Facebook wants to produce content, and Verizon wants to. I, 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 Verizon wants to collect data. So, right. every I think it's just too, everybody wants to be. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, something now. I'm, I'm now. I'm turning you into a bitter old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where it starts. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, any other uh, uh, thoughts, questions from the audience? Or have we just left you guys completely <laughs> numb and without any opinion whatsoever? Any last words from uh, where? Where do you think you're gonna? Well, let's just, do this kind of like wait, wait, don't tell me. No, is it wait, wait, don't tell me? Yeah, give us give us the predictions of uh, where, where are we gonna be on this uh, in, in 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 three to five years? I hope I don't owe Peter Sager a royalty for having said that. I predict that the broadband providers will continue to stay on relatively good behavior um, because they don't want even more regulation. That's my prediction. So, so a lot of the parade of horribles that we've talked about, I think we're not likely to see in the short term. I certainly hope we won't, but I think that they're um, probably self-interested enough to to keep their be bad behavior in check. And, and I, I I agree with that. Uh, one thing I, I think what will change is uh, rural access. And I think from there, um, once we build infrastructure in those places, then I think we'll see the regime kind of change a little bit. Uh, because the way it is right now, no one wants a new agency to regulate data. I don't think the sky's going to fall. I think there may be some uh, uh, laws put in later down the line that probably will overall be effective, and we'll kind of get kind of just like a mediocrity kind of set in with some kind of complacency. But now I'm also turning into an old crotchety old woman, so I don't know. <laughs> Emotionally. <Yeah. laughs> and I, my prediction is I, I actually think that this legislation may go through because I think that the logic, I mean, and if I, I mean, if I were uh, 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 the Republican uh, uh, majority on Capitol Hill, I'd say to my, I'd be saying to myself, if it, number one, I'm not sure that we're going to have this majority forever. Number two, I'm not sure that we're going to have a Republican in the chairman's seat or in the White House forever. And um, if we are going to do anything that's going to prevent a possible Democrat in the White House or a Democrat in the chairman's seat to going back to Title II someday, which the, the thought of even of that is, is enough to make my brain melt. But um, the way to do it is to enact this legislation because that legislation will preempt or undermine political argument um, and do it in a way so that we get not too much but just enough 
and then this way the title and then as far as the 96 act that thing is a that thing is a train wreck it's got to be it's got to be rewritten but that's um that's probably uh, I'll, hopefully i'll be somewhere fishing by the time you guys can mess with that one when that one comes along um if there are no other questions i want to thank our panelists thank you Thank Commissioner Clyburn for, for having yeah. come. Mm -hmm. Thank all of you for you. Uh, uh, enduring this on such a we have a re weather reception day. outside. And we have a reception Light outside. Reception and outside. Uh, it does it just keeps getting better. <laughs> so thank you all. <laughs>